What's up, what's up, what's up, everybody? Welcome back. Today, we are working on replacing Google Maps, and today's topic is trying to handle transit data. So how do we, how do we say, I'm going to go from location A to location B, and I'm going to take the bus to get there? That's kind of what we want to tackle today. So uh, this is the current state. This is a map of Vancouver, where I live. Uh, we have a path planner, so I can come over here and I can say, like, I want to go from over here to over here. And, you know, that red line indicates, you know, the path that it thinks we're going to take. We can do things like, say, uh, if you're going diagonally, you might get a little bit annoyed by, like, amount of zigzagging. So we can add, like, like some momentum to our thing so that, you know, it prefers to go straight lines. We can do things like we can say, um, hey, I'm going to walk on the sidewalk, which means, uh, you know, I... I'm not a car, so could I like maybe prefer that I walk on the sidewalk, not on the street? Or you can do vice versa, and you can say like, uh, I guess you can say, hey, I'm a car, so don't put me on the sidewalk. In fact, never put me on the sidewalk. We, we, we want like a really high cost to that. And so now the red line goes between the sidewalks. Um, so it's like kind of functional to some extent for navigating um, by foot or by bike or by car. Not like perfect, but you know, almost usable. Um, and so yeah, the task for today is how do we like connect the bus route? So what we have right now is this blue data or these bl blue data. The data is not blue. The representation of the data is blue though. And these are um, all of the bus stops in the city. So this is a bus stop here and we have a blue line drawn between them, these two stops. Um, and so we have kind of like the connections of all of these things, but we don't really have any information about uh, like which routes these are a part of. So I think part of an important part part of an important part <laughs> an important part of this is going to be uh once we plan the route we're going to want to say like wait for the number 25 bus and so we need to tie these things back to bus routes so that's the first thing i want to look at um then i want to look at uh connecting these two graphs together so right now if i try to say like i want to go from here to over here it's never going to get on the bus route because there are no connections from the main route to the bus route i actually don't know right now if i actually say if i like am on the bus path I don't actually know if it will successfully path plan from there. No, it looks like it won't. Um, so we will have to kind of get some sort of connection of our regular path planning onto the bus. Um, and so, yeah, we're going to want how we're going to ask for neighbors that are bus stops because the idea is that um, our normal path planning algorithm is kind of based off of distance. Right, so we kind of say like, I'm going to try to find the shortest path. However, if you're trying to get on the bus, now all of a sudden you have this like time constraint where you're gonna say like, I I've got to this bus stop, but the bus is gonna come for 30 seconds. Sorry, for 30 for 30 minutes. And so we need to somehow like encode that information. And so the way I want to do that right now, I think, is I want to add basically like a separate graph or like a separate type of connection for I'm going to get on the bus here. I don't know what that looks like yet, but that's gonna have to get done then once we have that then the path planner should be pretty easy to hook up like okay so now that we have these neighbors that are bus stops uh, let's get on the bus fucking bus and see where it goes um so yep that's the plan we'll see where it goes if we get through all of that we can start looking at like looking at the bus stop like the bus times and trying to schedule in time space for the rest of our things, so we'll have to like set like a walking speed and say like, oh, if I walk this fast and I'll get here by this time. And then if they get there by that time, then I'll have to wait this long for the bus, stuff like that. But I doubt we'll get this far. I think that this is probably where we're gonna end up today. That's the plan. That's the plan. Uh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. So first thing, let's show the bus route. So uh, this data comes from these, uh, Google Transit, it's called. Uh, I went to like the TransLink website, which is like Vancouver's bus system, and just hit like download static GTFS data, uh, where GTFS stands for something. Apparently Google Transit, but I think also not Google Transit. I think Google Transit extension is like something else. General Transit, maybe. Who knows? Uh, FS feeds, uh, maybe. I don't remember. <laughs> uh, but in this thing, they have kind of like four layers of information for how we draw what we're drawing right now. There is the uh, stop times. So this has like, uh, I at 12 o'clock will be here. At, at, I will at 12 o'clock be at stop ID five. And at 12.03, I'll be at stop ID six. So this kind of links stops together. Then there's stops, which is like stop ID five is, uh, he's at position x, y, and stop ID 6 is at x2, y2, right? Then there's trips, 
So these trips are kind of like one bus will go from one one end of town to the other end of town and he'll stop at like 50 stops along the way. So this stops times thing also says trip ID. So this is like trip one, trip one. And so this kind of like is how you kind of link together um, like several stops to one bus route. And so then trips are also part of routes. So um, trips will say like, I am trip ID one and route ID two. And then route is just like route ID two is the number 25 bus, Tri route three is the number 16 bus. And so here you're gonna have like, you know, this is kind of how you tie these things together. So you go stop time stops to stop times to trips to routes. That's how we figure this shit out. And so, um, the data that they give us is a bunch of like CSVs, but these CSVs are really structured like you would want to use them in an SQL database, right? Like you can see this like route ID is duplicated 6612, 6612, 6612, 6612. So this stuff is like kind of set up in a way where it makes a lot of sense to try to do like, you know, join, like give me trips, left join routes where trips ID or route ID and trips is the route ID and the routes. And like, you can tie stuff together like that. So what we do is we hook all, we take the CSV data and we generate some SQL databases from them. Then when we are generating our site, uh, cause we generate our site, this, the, what you're seeing right here is, um, this is static data. We run this this data translator to take like open street maps data and satellite data and uh bus data and we kind of like squish it all together and shove it into this like site output so when we are generating the site we like generate this database and we look at it and we try to pull out information that we care about so that's the background information that we need to know for how we get bus route info we have this like bus db thing that looks at the generated sql database and he says hey given this route um, I want to pull in these, these stops, uh, from the stop times thing, but we are going to like join the stops and join the trip where like by trip. Um, I think what we do is we find the first trip for any route, which is kind of like a random trip. We might want to do something more intelligent in the future, like maybe all trips, um, or maybe we will want to set a time. Um, maybe we'll want to like link trips by time so we'll send up all of the trip times up to the database and we will only show or sorry up to the uh, client and we will only show trips that are relevant for a given time in the day maybe i don't really know yet um, but this is something that we have to look into but for now we'll assume that all trips that tra travel one route are going to be like roughly equivalent which i'm pretty sure is not true but we'll, we'll assume for now um, so if we are trying to get the stops for a route, we already have this idea of like, okay, so this is the stop sequence. These are the stop IDs I'm going to create. Uh, and we tie those to a route here. So we say get all stops. We iterate all, we iterate by route. We get this route ID, we have these stops. So I guess what we want is here, we probably want to add some like metadata about the route, I guess. <laughs> I don't fucking know. And so we can like kind of look at what metadata we have here. We have the short name and the long name. So short name is like the bus number. I don't know what agency ID is. Probably translink, TL for translink. Um, and then so there's no description that we have, no right name, blah blah blah. So uh if we are going to hook this stuff up uh in the way that like OpenStreetMaps it is. OpenStreetMaps has nodes and ways and ways have attributes so if i go in here and i like hover this sidewalk or this alley i'm seeing like highway service lanes one service alley so these are like traits of this connection and so we can kind of think of like our bus stuff as like representing that very similarly right we have nodes bus stops and ways trips and so we can kind of just add to our trip which actually gets highlighted here, right? This blue line is like one trip. Um, so we could maybe on this trip specify a, like this is part of this bus route. OSM also has relations that link together ways to for routes. Ooh, that does sound familiar. Uh, so I think it's OSM relations. Relations are collections of structured objects, nodes, ways, and other relations. All with nodes and ways are one of three, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so I guess the idea here is that because a way has to share, a way, one way has to share all of the same metadata, you might have um, 
you might have like a street here that's marked as like highway residential but as you like go up this street maybe it turns into a primary street and so i guess like if you're trying to plot a bus route you might need to collect several ways together that have different attributes into one like mega collection that would be my guess however in our case we don't have to worry about that i don't think we're using relations anywhere right now and our trips are kind of bound together we don't have this like this problem of mixed and matched ways so i think that we will just assign i think we will just assign metadata to our trips which we will call ways and then everything else kind of works we can like reuse our existing data format so i guess here we're just going to extract as part of our route info my parents were making fun of me for saying route i'm supposed to say root as a canadian so apologies canadians you americans have like infected my vocabulary i've watched like too much tv which is all exported and so now i'm stuck i also spell everything wrong i don't put use thing in things i i, I pr try to write color like this instead of like this like the like the way god intended <laughs> uh or turn restrictions for vehicles like you can't turn left somewhere that's a relation oh so you like you relate the way the input way and the output way and say no turning there that makes sense that makes sense uh okay so here we want like a short name and long name and that means that f when we kind of walk our routes we're going to want i already forgot the the name of them in the data uh route short name and route long name. Fuck, root short name it's because there's a u it, in the word it looks like it should be pronounced route route short name oops route short name and route long name and oh from a to b via c right because the turn goes through an intersection which is like maybe another way yet again uh okay so we have const short name is c s q no we have like an extractor uh extract text uh this is temporary right so that the when you ask for sqlite for some text data it is like allocated as part of this like statement object and if we want to remember that stuff we have to pull it out we can't just like call, we can't just use their thing directly we have to say uh extract so let's make a function here that says like extract column text like this and he's going to take in the allocator and he's just going to call uh extract column text temporary with the statement, which I just fucked up heavy here. This goes like this. And the column ID, and then we will just say, this is the S, uh, if S equals null, return, or I guess we can do like a little or else return null like this, boom. Uh, then we have, an alloc dupe zero terminated i don't think we need null termination here i don't think so we're going to duplicate this thing and this is failable because allocations can fail in this language uh which means wherever the fuck we just were here we're going to say extract column text with our allocator this is failable we're going to use statement and column one and the long name is column two we're going to say hey if something fails here we have to free the stuff that we've already pulled up so like this oh but if it doesn't fail we do not have to free it then we say hey short name is equal to short name and long name is equal to long name and then this stuff is going to get leakied for sure for sure um here i guess if we don't get a short name or a long name something's gone like pretty wrong so uh we will return error no short and no long name i guess maybe we'll say no route long name no route short name now you could maybe argue that this is not an error maybe it makes sense to try to continue here but since this is on like site generation I don't think we have to be like that robust to failure. I think that if there's failure, we'll fucking notice and we'll be fine. We'll be fine, maybe. You never know. Um, okay. I guess it kind of makes sense to do this. It doesn't really matter. The order is not super important here. 
arguably we should try to get the stops before this, but it doesn't matter. And I guess this also should have an error defer that's like alloc free seek sequence. I guess, even though nothing can fail after, it's just kind of nice, like, defensively program a little bit, you know? Something will change in the future, and then you don't want to deal with it then. Uh, now, this stuff, route info now needs, like, a function D in it. And he's going to take itself. Route info. And uh, alloc allocator, and he's going to say, yo, I don't need this short name or long name anymore. Thank you very much, sir. I guess this probably should be public because we are using this externally. And we're going to make site now. We're going to say get all stops. And this is going to return a bunch of route infos. So we're going to say like defer uh, four routes route route d init alloc. There we go. And this actually should be one line. Look at that. Fancy. And this has to be by pointer. Have you seen NASA code guidelines? That's offensive as fuck. Uh, dude, NASA code guidelines seem pretty sick. I've never read them, but I've heard that they are very rigorous. I've heard that, like, they have to put up with stuff, like, um, because, like, you don't have, like, the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, cosmic rays are, like, a real concern where, like, the sun might just kind of, like, shoot <laughs> your, your electronics a little bit and just, like, flip bits. And so I've heard that they do stuff like they install like three of the same thing in like different locations and then take the average of the or take like the the majority of the three because one of them might be wrong. And if they can't agree, then they have just like give up and try again. Stuff like that is so fucking sick. The idea that just like your whole code could like corrupt itself at any point is like very funny. Very cool. Very cool. They don't do while true. That makes sense. I think that like I've I've heard yeah like the idea that like uh you should always be able to predict the upper bound of something is like kind of true. Uh that's pretty cool. I think that it, it would be very interesting to write that type of code for a while. I don't know if I'd like be able to convince myself to do it myself but it does seem like you would probably learn a lot of like really good strategies right in the same way that like i wrote rust for a while and rust kind of like kind of like berated me into program like out of certain like patterns that are actually kind of like not good it, it, i think that probably writing code like that for would would just make you a better overall programmer you would just like know you would just always be failure resistant and that'd be so cool that'd be so sick and i'm like and i know being like i can't be failure resistant now because i'm not like disciplined enough is kind of stupid but it is a little bit true as well <laughs> uh okay so what what do we have to do here i think that we want to take all of our routes and i guess if we are going to attach them to ways, they need like string string table IDs, which means that we need to push them into the string table. Because the way that we like create IDs right now is we kind of have like, um, you know, we'll have like a way 50. He's way number 50. And he is like a connection between some like points in the map, right? He's like boop, boop, boop. Now he in like in, we have kind of like two chunks of data. One is this like binary blob of like just just points and stuff. So we have like, you know, point zero zero one one two two. These are like points, and then we have like an index buffer that goes like zero one two to draw a line between these three points. Um this goes in like binary blob data. Then I think that in our binary blob we also shove like strings like hi and mom and then what happens is in like this json blob that we ship along with the binary blob we have like tags at like 50 has like key you know zero v one approximately and then so this like this way would then like have the trait high mom is like kind of how this is structured so if we want to uh, if we want to add the same thing where we have like, you know, uh, 
like bus like sh uh bus short uh would go to like 25 and bus long is like Brentwood station these need to end up like in this data over here and then these need like uh, i guess the the t the keys also need to end up over here so all four of these strings need to end up in the string table and then we need to like assign these strings so previously all of the string table mapping was done in like xml parsing because like the open street maps data is this like blob of xml so this is kind of like the only place that we'd be seeing these like strings before now the question is, is, is it easy for us to tack on stuff after? Because we kind of know that every string in the bus routes, we are going to want to push the clients. We don't have to worry about this like, oh, is the string a dupe? Or I guess we do need to worry about duplicates. We just don't need to worry about like discarding strings. So let's kind of see where we did that stuff in the open street map side. I think there's like a string table here. String table. Nice. Okay, string table. And he has uh a rollback mechanism ah yeah so we say okay, i'm gonna push some stuff to the string table it's gonna go in in order you're gonna keep track of whether or not the string is a duplicate or not and only push stuff if it's not a duplicate um and when i say push you're gonna give me back a, a index into the string table which is very sick very sick so then i think that this stuff all gets stashed in memory and we write it out later i think we write it out here so as long as we are pushing into the string table before this point we're like fucking chilling uh, which kind of indicates that here we can just do like user data string table uh, push for each route. So we can kind of just do this. Yeah. Okay. So then we see here that we have like const. Now, what do we do with this is the question. What do we do with this? Because then all of this stuff has to make it into our metadata JSON shenanigans later. So here we need to do something like user data way tags insert this key, this value. Okay. Way tags is this thing. How do we do this before? We have like a way cache, I think, that has... Um, so there's a bunch of stuff in OpenStreetMaps data that's not streets. It's like buildings and stuff. And so we kind of like walk this stuff and we say like, I'm going to look at all these keys and I'm going to like cache all of this data associated with the stuff. And uh, if, if, the, if it turns out that this isn't a street because it didn't have like a street tag associated with it, then we kind of discard all of it. So here, I guess they start, we probably cache a bunch of tags. And then probably at some point we like consume these tags and put them into are like user data tags. Yes. So way tags gets like appended with this way tag keys and vowels. Okay, so we don't need to worry about that too much. We just need to on our end, we know that we're gonna use all of the keys and values. So we're gonna say like this route tags is a std array list of metadata tags. Okay. That sounds fine so far. We probably destroy this thing later, I assume. I don't really know what's going on. I'm just kind of like figuring it out as we go. <laughs> uh, then we have like user data way tags append. And I assume it's like this route tags to own slice, I assume. I don't know, but that sounds right. Uh, and then I guess we need to look. I guess there is only one short and long, long name. For the whole thing. Okay. So I guess we don't actually have to allocate this. We only have two keys and two values. Okay, so we have um, short name key. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So const short name key is like route uh, short, but short name. Now I'm concerned about like collision with open street maps tags, but in reality it's probably fine. So I'm not going to worry about it. 
and then we'll say long name key is the long name. And then here we don't have this, we just kind of say uh, our keys. I think the keys are the first thing. <coughs> and the values are the second thing. And then these are, this is going to be like a slice pointing to some stack data. So I think we might have to dupe something. I just don't know what we have to do or like allocate. Probably this. And this. Then, th and this, all three. I think, yeah, that does make sense. When I like free user data, what happens? We only free two things, not a third thing. So, what? <laughs> oh, because um, the tags is key value. And so the arrays of keys and the arrays of values are known to be those two things is like a length of two. So it's, that's an array, not a slice. So this should be, uh, this should be two, uh, something. However the fuck you say this. It's like metadata tags this is already defined as two u sizes yes 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 two slices of u size perfect 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 we got there we got there and so now this just needs the uh short name key long name key and these are going to map to the short name val and the long name val cool which means that these guys get like short name val is equal to this and this is long name val and we're chilling uh, this probably needs to be like try, try. This needs to be like a pen slice. This needs to be try, and this might need an allocator. Uh, member function expected one, so no. And then I think here as well, these guys need to say uh, we are duplicating slices of U sizes. I guess just U size. And then uh, we're going to say this is const keys, const vals. Here we need to say error defer keys d in it or alloc free keys. Yup, yup. Alloc free vals. And then here, do we need to like, that's oh, fine, it's fine. I guess really like in any error here is just gonna like eject itself up to the top of main. So in reality, it doesn't really matter, but you know. We can be a little good citizens of the world. <clears throat> He's mad about something. Is it because this can fail? Yes. Uh, he's mad about something else. I actually don't know what. Uh, yeah, I don't understand what the problem here is. Oh, because these also could be tried at the top. Oopies. And then array literal. Oh, so this is just a pen, not a pen slice. Oh, fuck, 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 fuck. Uh, I think my language crashed. We come back, we try again. Uh, append, where the fuck were we? Here. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that's probably good. Uh, then we need to, like, did our metadata end up getting user data weight tags? It did, this is this. The string tables were pushed. So I don't really see why this wouldn't work. Now we need to make the site though, if you think about it. <laughs> uh, just for the record, when I say if you think about it, I'm never serious. Uh, it's one of those things where like, my friend was telling me that when he was a kid, uh, this guy, would just always say if you think about it about things that were like it's kind of like condescending to say if you think about it right it's like i think this thing and you don't think it so it's like you're wrong if you think about it is like so so condescending and so in my head it's just really funny to say if you think about it all the time uh but you guys don't have that context so i have to be a little careful 
Uh, what is it fucking complaining about? Get stops. Oh, it is because this returns a uh, stop sequence. So this needs to be like seek D in it, I guess. And then uh, function D in it here takes an allocator, I guess. And uh, this is alloc free IDs and alloc free points. Uh, which means instead of itself, you don't have to think about it. I gotta stop, man. I gotta stop. <laughs> and uh, this needs to be var, I guess, that that DNA works. And then I think we're drawing. <clears throat> He's building. He's building. He's building. Fuck, I missed the chance to make a joke. It said, uh, it was, it was saying building native release, like, for a native, like, plat build for this platform, but it cut off the VE in native, so it looked like it was natty, which I think is when people say that they work out without taking steroids, which is also kind of funny. It's funny to think that you need a word for I don't do steroids. I think the word should be I do do steroids. I said do do. What, okay, I gotta say. <laughs> the pro, the pro there's a problem where, like, uh, when nothing is happening, I feel a need to fill time. And so you get me saying things like, ha ha, I said doo-doo, and talking about steroids. It's like, what is happening? This is a coding stream. What is what is going on? Uh, okay, so do we get bus info here? This is all we wanted to know. Is like, if we highlight this, short name 014, long name 014. So, I mean, we were all thinking it. So the good news is, is I do think this is the bus number 14. The bad news is I don't think that it should be saying long name 14. This is the 99, which is really good. We just need the long names right. Too much cooking. Yeah, too much. Like, like a I'm, I'm cooking the brain up a little too. <laughs> uh, so this is getting short name key, long name key, short name vowel, long name vowel. Long name vowel is posting the long name. So here we probably just, when we've pulled from the database, we probably just said the same number twice here instead of pulling out the long name from column two. See, he's natty. <laughs> so fucking stupid. <laughs> Almost burning the food. Do you still need all those logs? No. No. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> but what you gonna do? Fix them? That's not a that's not prototype node. Prototype mode is we don't care about anything. We just do whatever's gotta get done. Uh okay. Let's go over to the fucking bus loop here, and we have 44 UBC downtown, 84 VCC Clark, let's go, 68 UBC Exchange Westbrook, this feels good, baby, R4, 41st, dude, the R4 is so sick, what a cool bus, they get, like, light priority, so, like, if the bus is running behind, the city changes the light schedule so that the bus keeps up, isn't that sick? Uh, I, did I mix texture streaming? Any LODs? We didn't end up implementing LODs because um, when I did like the math for how much GPU memory this actually takes up, it's actually not too bad. It's like maybe three gigs, which is like a lot for a website. Yes, not a lot for my debug view of the city. So they're kind of you can kind of see the tile boundaries somewhere. Let's see. I think I just saw one. If we like kind of scroll around, we'll see one eventually. Here, right. So you can see here. There's like a tile boundary here. So these are pulled from a. Uh, Vancouver's Vancouver gives us like open it's like Vancouver open data portal or something and they just had somebody or some groups of people go around and photograph from the sky so this is 22 2022 image tiles representing Vancouver which is good enough for our purposes because the only thing I was really really needed this for is like I was getting lost like like when I was like looking like close up like this I was like where the fuck am I uh so this helps me like identify main streets and stuff which is sick which is sick. I don't know if I'll keep it for the like the final version because I don't know if like the cost of like streaming images to my phone when I'm trying to get like bus routes is going to be relevant. I'll probably I might switch to like kind of like the low res normal like Google Map like SVG tiles or something. We'll see. Uh, okay, so I think we're chilling here. I think we have 
information about the buses that we want. So we're we're good to go there. Now we need to fucking figure out how to like connect these to the rest of the graph. How do we do that? Let's do a little git add dash u git commit dash m and we'll say bus names smile. If we don't smile in our commit messages, how will the future know that we're happy, you know? Uh, okay. So, <clears throat> for now, even though it is far from ideal, I think that I'm going to just try to find the closest node to a bus stop um, on a street. Really what we should do is we should probably find the closest point on a sidewalk or something. Um, and then try to like split that way in half and like add a new way idea or something. But I don't want to do that. So instead, I'll just find the closest node and we will say you have to like you can board the bus from here or something, which is like a little a little silly. Um, but good enough. Good enough for a prototype. You have to remember we are always on V0. We never make it to V1. <laughs> and so we always take shortcuts. Um, so we have to like do something like when we're doing like our site generation. I guess we will like add connections for each bus stop to the closest node in the non bus stop section. I guess we could do that on app in it too. Do I think that that belongs on app initialization or do I think that belongs in like static data? Let me think about that. What are like the pros and cons here? Pros of static data, um, less compute on client. Pros of doing it in the client, less data transfer. Okay. Is there any other like reasons that we would want to change this? Um, if we wanted to change the rules about how points are mapped to to bus uh then we could do that easily on the client the client is going to have to know about the like these are like kind of like special connections right the idea of getting onto the bus is going to require some extra extra rules so we will already have to iterate these connections but we could iterate the connections instead of the points Either way, we're going to have to keep track of those, though. So I guess what we'll do, what I'm thinking, is we have in our metadata bus way start index. So our, our, like, our data is kind of like laid out like uh, OSM points, bus points. Then it goes like, OSM ways, bus ways, strings. Maybe some other stuff. I don't really remember. And so we can just kind of say that, like, maybe here we put in, like, uh, like, bus, uh, get on bus. And so then we kind of have, we'll get on bus ways. And so then we can kind of start doing things like we can draw them in a different color. We can like iterate them specially. We can add those to like a special map of like node connections. Um, I think that makes sense. That makes sense. Cause there's no point in doing the like point to point, uh, like look up every time we start the app. That is a little silly. Okay. I don't know if mappers in Vancouver or have mapped it, but there are tags for bus stop locations that are placed on roads. Uh, we could look at that. We could look. Bus. Bus stop. Oh, interesting. I mean, not that we are going to use this exactly. Because um, we do want all of our bus data to come straight from the source. But this is interesting in that uh, that means that if we are just to do like find closest node, um, because the nodes are already mapped as bus stops, we should have a very good match for each stop, probably. Right, like here if we look at uh, 49.28, yeah, let's like kind of like 
I wonder if we can, like, find this in the stops. Not so lucky. 49.28 for negative 123.112. Two four eight one 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 two. It's probably this one. Three six seven three nine one and four three five two eight four nine oh eight two eight four four three five. I don't really know like how off that is in meters. We could look. Lat lawn to meters. We can just kind of like latitude, longitude, and this is latitude, longitude, five kilometers. Oh no, 52 meters. That's still not great. That's pretty fucking far. So maybe I'm wrong about this. Maybe we're wrong. What if we search the other way? 49.284435. 123.1112. 1, um, okay. I don't know. I don't know. Let's just kind of... Instead of this, let's just try and see what happens. <laughs> okay. Okay, so what did we say we were going to do? We said we were going to put bus to, like, the bus stop to normal map. We were going to put that in a separate section. So we're going to say, like, bus to, or, uh, like, OSM to bus way start index. And it's going to be OSM to bus way start. <laughs> and this is going to look like here. We add all our routes and then we say OSM to bus way start is equal to this. Now we have to make sure that when we push a GTFS way, we are correctly updating numpush ways, which we are. We are chilling there. And so now we just want to say for routes route for Hmm, how do I want to do this? Are we... We have seen GTFS nodes. We could map these... So, so sorry, what am I thinking? Um, we might have duplicate stop IDs. And so, or we might have like the same stop in multiple routes. And so if we want to make sure that we only map per stop, we need to only do this once per stop ID, which means iterating routes isn't really great. We need to iterate stops. And so here, if we say, hey, we have like, we have already tracking which ones we've seen in a hash set. We can just turn this hash set into a hash map that maps to uh, what? I don't know. I don't know. Point? U size? I guess we want like a GTFS node. We need its location for doing lookup later. Uh, so we call this like lat lawn. And then what? Then what? He has his latitude, his longitude, as well as his stop ID or index. His index into the data writer or maybe a stop ID as an I64 because the stop IDs are stored into indexes here but like why would we use stop ID instead of USI it, maybe we don't even need the stop ID because we have the stop ID as the key here sure is do we need anything other than latitude and longitude let me think. 
We are trying to find out which point is closest, so no. No, and then where is like all of our OSM way? Our, our brain melting? All of our OSM nodes come from where? User data, node storage, here. Ah, so we already have this. We just do the same fucking map. Scene, oh, GTFS nodes. This is just gonna go to node storage, node data. Okay. Then here, we say this, if we did not find existing scene dot value pointer lat is equal to stop lat and lawn is equal to stop lawn. Okay. Then if we want to find the distance, we want to find the closest stop, we just do, we, I guess we kind of have to do coordinate space conversion right if we should do straight line distance in like latitude longitude space we would get bias towards things that are close on the x-axis but not the y-axis because if we do latitude longitude um it's kind of like squished uh include the twitch chat and youtube videos don't tell me what to do <laughs> sorry just no um okay um, what now, what now, what now? So I guess here we are going to iterate all of the nodes. Convert to meter space. Maybe as like a first pass, we'll just allow it to be wrong. So we'll do straight line distance and latitude longitude space, which I know is wrong, but I don't want to deal with more stuff than I need to right now. So when we get to here, fix me latitude, longitude, space is not correct to find closest point. Uh, but that's okay, that's okay. And we're just gonna say for routes, nope, for scene, GTFS nodes, we need some sort of iterator, I guess. Iterator. Scene, so we're gonna say, call this like a uh, bus stop iterator. Uh, we're gonna say what, like while bus stop it to dot next uh, item, item value pointer lat. What are we doing here? We're we, here, we wanna iterate all other points. That's fucked. That'll take forever. So we actually kind of have to like bucket the things like we like we were before, like we do for like way lookup. Uh, which is doable. Hold on. Uh, I guess. Thinking, thinking, thinking. Map data. We have like some bucketing thing here. Maybe it's an app. So here, this is, we kind of like bucket points on a way and then say, given this latitude and longitude, could you give me all the things in this bucket? Which I know by the way is not correct, right? So this is a type that we have where we kind of like take a map Boom, boom, boom. We split it up into like a grid. Womp, womp, womp. And we kind of say like, okay, all of the streets that go through here are like kind of adjacent to each other. All the streets that go through here are adjacent to each other. And we kind of like mark them based off of the ends of these things. Now where this fails is if I have a really long street, it does not notice this, this, or this, which means that like, if we have a point in here, we're trying to calculate which is the closest way. We say, give me all the ways in my box. And we won't, we won't look at this one, which might be the closest. So this is very similar, very similar to the concept of what we're trying to do is we're trying to say like, given a point here, I want to find the closest point. And so if we bucket this up, if we do like the same thing where we bucket like this, 
um, we should be able to say like, okay, well, I'll only look at points that are in my bucket. In reality, again, what we should do is we should kind of like go out into adjacent buckets as well. Um, but we don't do that right now either because we are fucking stupid. But if we kind of manage to reuse this class, um, then we might be able to kind of get those both those improvements for free later. So I just want to see if there's a way to kind of convert this way buckets class into like a just generic bucketed thing class. Um, so like the concept of like buckets, this is kind of going to stay, this is going to exist. Bucket ID is also going to exist. Uh, this goes from way ID set. What is this for? Oh, okay. So each of our bucket has a set of things in it. Okay. Okay. Probably that's only for kind of like instantiation. So probably we want to, we like iterate over. Yeah, yeah. So we push into these buckets, these things, if they are unique. Okay. So that's kind of like this push function. And we just say, hey, we have like something that we want to push into this latitude and longitude. And then we have like, hey, we have this thing that we want to get for these. We want, like, we want to get a set of those things for this latitude and longitude. This definitely can be converted for sure. For sure. So let's kind of do that. So we're going to call this like uh, pub function, uh, like bucket, <laughs> um, like map buckets, I guess. And he's going to take in some type of like type that he's trying to store. And he's going to return a type that is kind of like a, an implementation of this function, of this structure for this particular type. He is not going to store way IDs. He's going to store T. Okay. And then I don't like the idea of this being a hash map thing in here. Uh, so I think what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to kind of split out this push thing into like a builder. I'm going to make a builder for this, I think. That's kind of fun. We'll see if this is fucking stupid in a minute. But right now, I kind of think that like, you know, as we are building this thing, we're going to call this like item set. You know, we're going to initialize this thing with probably... Um all of these same parameters, I guess. Let me think about how we want to do this. So this kind of gets like all the same parameters. Maybe he's going to get, maybe he's just going to say like, uh, inner is a map buckets. Uh, I guess it's going to kind of be like self, which means that this is going to be like, kind of like a self maybe we'll see. And then that way he can kind of say like, he has inner and then he has the like uh items as an item set maybe we'll call it set item set and inner then his he starts with his buckets being like this uh generic buckets sound nice consider kd trees too yeah i mean i think that we've kind of looked at these like better versions like kd trees and r trees and stuff i think those are the benefit of those is kind of the idea that you can have like sparse areas of the graph. And I just don't think I need that optimization and don't want to take on the complexity of figuring that out. But maybe the idea of uh, going up layers is maybe, maybe as we start kind of going into that like swirly whirly shit, right? Where we try to like expand out from our current bucket. Maybe the idea of these like KD trees and R trees and stuff, maybe those will become more relevant because we can kind of just keep going up layers of the tree and looking at our at our siblings. So maybe, 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 maybe. But for now, for now we'll just do the stupid thing. Because, you know, I want to. <laughs> uh, so this is gonna be an item set here. He's gonna allocate for each of these. And then here his set is gonna be buckets, I guess. So we'll call this set, I guess. Set is set. 
And then our inner, we're going to have like all this stuff. Okay. Then we're going to have like build. Um, like this. And he is going to take in self. And he's going to convert his existing item set into, which is actually supposed to go from T's. This is where he like takes the set and turns it into the real things. So he's going to say like, he's going to return self, which is a confusing word here, but that's okay for now. And he's going to say return self inner for sure. And the self inner dot buckets is going to be this thing converted. So I don't really know if this like, what is in this fucking thing? This hash map. He's got all sorts of stuff that we don't really need. Can I like yoink out the keys without having to worry about it? Hash table keys and values each short squatchily. Insertion order is preserved. Blah blah blah. Modifying the hash map while iterating is allowed. This type does not score an allocator field. Allocator must be passed in. Sure. Have low overhead for small numbers of entries when store hash is false. Blah 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 blah. So my guess here is that the keys, they're supposed to be stored like in a contiguous chunk of memory. And I'm assuming that on D init, that chunk of memory is freed. Uh, D ent entries dot D init. So entries is a data list. Data list is a multi-array list, which is a uh, multi-array list of data where data is key and value, right? So yeah, we think we, we do just want to like copy, yeah. I think KD trees allow you to search the whole map effect efficiently for close nodes, not just limited bucket neighbors. Yeah, I think I think that's reasonable. I, I'm just a, a little opposed to it only because I don't want to take on the complexity of building a new type right now. Even though I think I think you're right, it's probably better. Um, but I think that like this grid is like good enough for now. And so I'm just gonna keep using the shittiest thing I can make that's good enough. <laughs> Uh, okay, so here we want like self inner alloc dupe. We want to duplicate the T's from self set keys, which means that this can fail. Then we want to do like we get the thing. And then we have like pub function d in it. Builder. And how do we handle like, how do we handle this? How do we handle this? I guess like we definitely want like self set d in it for sure, right? Uh, and then here, I guess we'll kind of say that this d in it uh, should only be called if build is not. D if build does is not called or does not succeed. And then that kind of means that here we say like self set dnit self inner alloc. And then self inner dnit like this. That feels right to me. That feels right. Although self inner dnit doesn't actually have any work to do. Uh, because all he has to free is the buckets. So in reality, this doesn't matter. And I don't know if self set D in it is it leaves itself in like an okay state. It makes himself undefined. So not really super good. Not super good. Okay. Sure. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. I guess in this case, we can say that this can be called... Uh, I would like to leave the ability open to have like stuff in here that is unsafe to DNN. So I'm just gonna say should only be called DNN and we'll do this here. That's fine, that's fine, that's fine. I want you to take it to do learn programming like this. Uh, you know, my whole life, <laughs> which is like fine, right? You, you get better as you practice. So if you're like, holy shit, I wanna get better. I think just, you know, just code more <laughs> and you'll get there. That is my overly simplistic view. Uh, I don't really want the allocator to be stored here. I want it to be stored in the builder. And then I want this D in it to take in the allocator. 
and then it's just kind of like this. Um, I'm missing an obvious problem that this is be double, double like this. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. So here, our item set, am I fucking stupid? What did it look like before? Before it was way ID to void. So each bucket, oh, each bucket had a set. You're right, you're right. Okay, no, I got it, I got it, I got it. Each bucket has a bunch of these. So buckets, buckets is like grid. Index equals y times width plus plus x. Then in in each of those we have a bunch more of these things that we want to store in that bucket. Uh, you're 22, trying to learn about yourself. You can build WordPress posts and understand basic HTML and CSS. What do you suggest to do next? Uh, I've never used WordPress, so take this with a grain of salt. Um, but I don't really know if I think that HTML and CSS is programming. That might be like a harsh, overly harsh and critical statement there. But I think that like, there's a difference between like, configuration and like, I guess I shouldn't say it's not programming, but there's, there's a difference between like writing logic and like configuring things, right? So my recommendation would be that like, if you're, if you're into building websites, try to build the same shit without WordPress. That would be my recommendation, right? Uh, because that will start to get you into like the path of, you know, using programming language to solve like more generic problems. Um, you'll, you'll have like, you'll have to like, 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 like oh, you're, somebody says WordPress uses PHP, so not just markup languages. So maybe I'm just like completely uninformed here. Um, but I think like just tackle more types of problems in less handed to you domains, right? So if you're building a site with WordPress, you're kind of like tacking yourself onto this like thing that manages a bunch of complexity for you. And the farther you can get yourself from things that do things for you, the more information you'll have and the more tools you'll have in your tool, your tool belt to do things. What language should I use? Oh, there are so many. I would continue on with whatever, like if I were you, I would probably you I would probably learn JavaScript. If you're like already in the world of making websites, the only option is JavaScript for client side programming. And then if you end up trying to look into a server, like I mean the it's gonna depend, right? There's so many options, like you say. Um, but in reality, just pick one. Just pick something, right? Like it doesn't it doesn't really matter. They're all very similar. Once you pick up a couple languages, the rest come naturally. You know, I'm biased in that I worked in fucking firmware for years, right? So if I'm like, I would say learn C, but like in reality, I don't think the vast majority of programmers need to learn C, right? So that's a bad recommendation. I wouldn't listen to me. Also, I'm just a guy on the internet. So asking me to tell you what to do is I think not very helpful. Like, I'm not going to give you a good answer because I don't know you. I don't know like a lot, right? So um, I would just say like overall recommendation is just like try to take away barriers to understanding kind of track that down wherever that makes sense where i would consider like frameworks and something like wordpress is a giant barrier to understanding right because you're kind of just you're allowing it to do all of the heavy lifting for you which i think is bad if you're trying to learn you'll make i got it right this time let's go <laughs> not that i care if you remember my name but it was fun i was i just thought it was funny last time when you you were clearly trying to say the right thing and it was just funny that like your memory just didn't quite get it right in multiple places. Pretty funny. That's all. I wasn't trying to wasn't trying to flame you. Uh, okay. What am I doing? <laughs> I'm trying to make this generic math buckets type. Um. Dun, 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 ba, dun, ba. So we have this thing that can build the thing. We build the thing with the thing. Um. So here we duplicate the keys, and this is no longer correct. Self inner buckets is not like this. It's self inner buckets. 
for each of our item sets. So our item set, this needs to be an array. That's the piece that we're missing. That's the piece we were missing, baby. So we need to go four, zero to something, some big ass number. Um, I guess self sets len. So this should be sets plural. Uh, this is going to be I. We're going to say self inner buckets at index I is a duplication of the thing at sets I ease. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. That seems right. Now, here we have another problem that self inner buckets I is not an array that's been allocated yet. So in here we need to create that thing. So self inner or const inner buckets is self inner, nope, alloc, self alloc, allocate uh, a bunch of t slices of size inner width times inner height. Okay. That makes sense so far. Uh, here we say, instead of self inner, we say, uh, inner buckets i now we have to be careful because like on failure this is going to be like a fucking shit show so we almost have to say like num pushed is equal to i guess we kind of want like i to be here then this becomes like a while loop uh while i is less than self sets len we do like i plus equals one and now that i exists in this scope we can do like a defer that says like, if we fail for whatever reason, we can go four zero to I and free each of the things. So alloc free uh, self alloc free inner buckets at J, which is kind of fucked, but whatever. In reality, this code will never be called and we'll never know if it's right. Uh, okay. So now we have this thing. He populates these. Blah, blah, blah. Then we just say self inner is equal to inner buckets. And return self inner. Chillin'. Chillin', chillin', chillin'. Okay. Which means that this init function just doesn't exist anymore. He does have a D in it here. Who's going to use uh alloc free bucket and alloc free self buckets okay lat long to bucket so this stuff all stays the same it's just now instead of way buckets everything that says way buckets in here needs to say uh self this is now a generic type okay and lat long are still going to be f32s but this is now going to say push item at t and this is going to get t's not way ids all right, we got there. Um, this is item now, not way ID, and everything else I think is fine. Oh, push doesn't exist anymore. We don't have a push. No more pushes, only gets. Okay, I think that's fine maybe? I guess push, we forgot that we actually have to implement push on the other side too. So can we do something like, Lat long to bucket doesn't take in self anymore, but he takes in, like, what does he need from self here? Just height and width. So lat long, width, height, uh, which is going to be F32s. Okay. If you say so. That makes sense. And then this stuff now can be called from the context of bucket. So we can put push in the builder. Boom. Push goes in our builder. Can he fix it? <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> and now this lat long to bucket takes in self width, self height, and over here. I guess it's kind of confusing to go lat long width height. To be honest, it's be self height, self width.
height, width. Uh, height, width. Uh, self inner dot height and self inner width. KD trees might not be might be pretty simple. Found CP single header live in three hundred lines. I think like the problem though is not necessarily like the number of lines as much as it is like the mental overhead that I need to like pick it up right now. Like I think again, I think you're right. It is like the correct solution. I just don't know if I have like the brain power to get there right now. You know, even if it's simple, it's just like another thing to tack on. Right now, I'm just trying to reuse what is existing. And I do agree. I get. I do agree that it would be good to pick up later. Okay. So all of this now. Um. Now let's try to convert the existing way buckets usage into this like new generic type. So we can kind of say map buckets to way ID. Which is like this. This should not be self flat long to bucket. This should be like this. Keys doesn't exist anymore because keys is not the thing that we're storing inside. Everything else is probably okay. Now we just need to make it so that whoever constructs this thing doesn't construct away buckets, but constructs away buckets builder. So here, when we parse index buffer, this is going to be a builder now. Can he fix it? Uh huh. We are going to way buckets push all this, and then at the end here we just say uh way buckets is try way buckets builder build. And then here this turns a way buckets builder. Boom boom. Alright. Maybe. Maybe. This is not the right color, which makes me think this isn't working. Probably because this doesn't have to be tried. I think Way Buckets Builder may not have to actually do anything. No, he certainly does. Certainly. Certainly is what I'm trying to say. Oh, this is the wrong thing. Like this. Uh, no set. Because it sets. God, I gotta stop hissing like a fucking snake. But, uh, you know. What you gonna do? It's impossible. If you gotta hiss, you gotta hiss. <laughs> so fucking stupid. Uh, we don't compile. It's too hard. Uh, push. No. Push in builder. Yes, there is. Oh. No, there's not. If it's a builder, it's a builder. If it's a self, it's a self. <laughs> uh, okay. What's it complaining about now? Expected type U size found F32. Uh, okay. That makes sense. What did we do here before? Before, we... Wait, you're making a competitor to Google Maps? Calling a competitor is maybe a little strong. Um... Oh, it's because width and height here should be X times Y. Uh, I... I mean, it will win one customer, and that customer will be me. Uh, but... You know, maybe maybe it'll be useful for someone else in the world as well. Type error out of memory. What is it complaining about here? Uh, but here, we can show it maybe. Here it is. Look at this. Look at that. That's a map. And it can do things like path plan. Look at that red line. Look at that red line, baby. Look at how it moves around the map. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, we're working on buses right now. That's what the blue stuff is. We're hooking up the bus grid to the real grid. But we're not quite there yet. We're not quite there yet. Um, way ID does not support indexing. Oh, so probably I forgot to try up here. If you got to try, you got to try. Um, no field name alloc and inner. That's true. I moved it out of inner. So this is just like this. No set set D in it. Um. And here we actually kind of want to call like self DNA. Like this, I guess. And then this allows us to kind of do for self sets set. It's set DNA alloc boom, like this. And then we self alloc free sets, I think. 
I'm a little lost. I'm not going to lie. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Sometimes the head hurts a little. 524 expected that found that. Right. Uh, because I'm supposed to be assigned to... What the fuck is going on? LSP restart. Elf inner buckets like this. <laughs> hey man, I wrote the wrong company with the wrong title and job position because I use a template for my cover letter. Even though I'm ninety percent certain they take me off, I throw the right down the right position and company name. How cooked do you think I am? Okay, uh, I one time, uh, when I was in university, I was uh shotgunning applications, and I had made the exact same problem. Or made the same mistake, except I made it so much worse. I had three company names in the same cover letter. And uh, they called me in for an interview and they said, I just had to meet whoever would do this. I think looking back, looking back at the time, I thought that they were just like fucking with me. They were just like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Um, but looking back, I would. there's no fucking way. You'd have to be like so stupid to be looking for someone to fill a position. And to take them in f for an interview if you weren't seriously considering them. Right? Because, like, that's an, oh, like an hour long waste, two hour long waste of your time, which is valuable. So, given my very limited experience, um, I got called in for an interview doing that. And it actually made them remember me, which might be good, might be bad. I don't know. It seems like it would be really bad. My guess is they, they wanted to look at me in spite of that. And then just thought, like, they should tell me. Um, so I think I think it does, like, look... It also depends on, like, the company's hiring procedure, right? Like, their HR people... If they're getting, like, tons and tons of applications, right? And they have, like, an HR person that doesn't really know how to code. And is just kind of, like, sifting through and trying to be like, Oh, I think this will look good. Then, like, they're going to be looking for very superficial things. Because, like, they're just trying to weed out, like, anything. Right, if they're trying to get like a hundred applications down to like ten, they're going to sort them based off like really bullshit criteria. Where that bullshit criteria might be things like you got the company name wrong. Maybe that's not even really bullshit, right? <laughs> so, uh, something that they, yeah, I don't know, I don't know. So, unfortunately, I don't have a good answer for you. Why the fuck is this hiring fucked? Uh, member function expected one arguments found zero a five. Did I get an offer? Not for that company. No, I did not. Unfortunately. Maybe fortunately. I ended up working somewhere that I really liked, so it might not be that bad. Uh, no field name OSM bus to a star. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. So does this build now? It does. I don't know why the highlighting is so fucked. So something's fucking weird. But if we build the WASM thing now, so if our way lookup still works okay, then this generic version of the map kind of works out, which is good. Instead, though, I'm seeing, I don't know, maybe it's fine. Uh, let's control shift I and let's do this. Let's try to make sure that we're getting the latest and greatest version of the site. It's fucking frozen because it's uh, loading a million app tiles. How did you get the map image? Uh, okay, so images came from... Uh, open street maps, or sorry, images came from uh, Vancouver's open data portal. They they called them Ortho Imagery 2022 dataset or something. Um, I pre-processed them in a bunch of ways, and then we got them here. Uh, the map data comes from like the streets and stuff come from open street maps, and the blue stuff, the bus routes, comes from Translink data, which is the Vancouver bus system. What was I trying to check here? If the way lookup works correctly. And it looks like it is. We are still getting blue line on blue line, which is good. Blue line is where I want blue line. Huzzah. Okay. So now we have this like generic bucketing system. Um, and so we should be able to go back into make site now and start using that. So. We. This gets us things in a bucket. This gets us things in a bucket. And so we are going to take all of our nodes and we're going to put them in buckets as we write them. So we can kind of just go like here. So 
so first of all, metadata. Metadata needs that thing. He was complaining about this. Metadata. Metadata goes here. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, and this will just set to zero initially. Fuck it. What industry do you currently work? Uh, I am unemployed right now, which is so fun, man. Being unemployed, it turns out, turns out, <laughs> having a job is stressful. And not having a job is much less stressful. So we do this. Um, we try, we're trying to make this, you know, if, if we could, if we could turn streaming into something that is, you know, maybe like one fifth as profitable, maybe one, yeah, one fifth as profitable as, as a real job, then I'll keep doing it. We're not quite there yet, but the number, you know, viewership is going up, which is pretty sick. Not that I should like be like, oh my God, guys, I need viewers. It's like, doesn't really, it doesn't really matter. If I don't, if this doesn't work out, I go back to working. Um, but yeah, for now we do this, for now we do this. I used to work in like, uh, firmware for like security cameras. And then I also worked in, uh, like neural network stuff where, uh, we were trying to like robot in robot cameras, cameras, look at box of stuff, robot, pick thing up and put somewhere, please. Right. So like precise orientation of things in 3d space using neural networks and cameras, both very fun jobs, both very fun jobs. Uh, do you like working with firmware? I'm getting so bored at work doing web dev. Every project is duplicating is just duct taping libraries together. Um, you could kind of think of firmware as the same. I don't think I, I honestly think firmware and everything else is a lot of the same shit, right? Because in firmware, you're you just kind of like s libraries uh components, right? So you're like, I have this lens controller, and you're like, somebody's like written a lens controller at some point in time and like technically you're, you own the code for that right but like in reality your your company is going to say well we already have a lens controller so when we make the next camera we're going to reuse the same lens controller or we're going to reuse this other component and so you're you're kind of stapling libraries together like everywhere it's just kind of the way it goes now i think that there are some companies where uh if you're working at a startup it's likely that you're solving kind of more novel problems right once you once your tech stack is like established you're a lot more like juggly library and uh, if you're a new ground, like if you're making a start, if you're employed at a startup, I would hope the goal there would be that the startup is providing new value that doesn't exist somewhere else. And so if you're like someone who wants to be doing like greenfield work, then like that's kind of maybe more the place, but really depends, really depends, really depends. Also, what the fuck do I know? Uh, all right, we're still on this build, so let's just do what the fuck we were trying to do. Uh, so a problem set seems more fun. Robots and 3D space projections make it seem more fun than we need to transform. I have always thought that interacting with the real world is just, like, an order of magnitude more fun. There's something so cool about, like, just, like, saying, like, I want it to turn right, and you see it turn right. That's so cool. It's so fun. So, yeah, you're right. There is something there, for sure. Um, Okay. So we, what did we, what were we doing? We were trying to add all of the nodes from the OSM, all of the OSM nodes to our map data writer. So we need to pull that thing out from app.sig. He's got to live somewhere else now. Map buckets. Map buckets comes into map data. We're all, this is kind of like turning into functions.zig. Everything that has to do with maps goes into map data <laughs> okay so now way buckets is map data map buckets which is fine this can actually go up the top now actually because he's kind of kind of there and then now in our make site we can now pull in map data and wherever the fuck we were we can say like osm buckets osm node buckets is a map data map buckets uh where you size node id you size i64 sure that seems right uh so here we start with our builder which gets alec and something uh, width and height so width and height we don't have right now but certainly we have these these come from data writer though 
but these should be populated by the time we push all of the nodes. But this is like kind of fucked up. Uh, so we're just going to kind of say like, fix me. This is really order dependent and not well defined at all. Gross. Ew. Please fix me. Please. All right. <laughs> We are going to have width. Is this max minus min. Height is lawn lat. Boom. Now we have a width and height to use here. Was it with height? It was. Uh, buckets builder. So now we have oh, def error defer OSM node buckets builder dnit, uh, which needs to be tried here, I guess. And then does this have an allocator? Nope. We push these things with an item lat and long. So the item is a node ID. So for, I don't know. Data writer OSM nodes. Node ID index map. Maybe, or like user data. What is user data? Uh, node storage also feels right. Uh, Keys, node storage key iterator. What the fuck is node storage? Node storage is the auto hash map of ID to node data, sure. Sure, uh, does node storage is only node storage from the XML stuff, OSM stuff. Again, this is all gross. Node storage iterator is equal to this. Uh, we're gonna throw another fix me. It's just like, holy crap, we need functions. <laughs> like. Why are we doing this all in main? What are we doing? Wow. Node storage IT next. Uh, node. We are going to push node storage IT at something. So it's actually going to be iterator. And we're going to say this is the node. We're going to push node dot key pointer at node value pointer dot lat node value pointer lawn. I'm not sure if we got the order of this right. Item lat long. Item lat long. Sure. Which means now we can build the thing. Var const osm node buckets is the node buckets builder built. Which eventually we need to de init, I guess. And then we have these things bucketed now, and we can do something like iterate all of our bus nodes. And for each one, we look up in OSM node buckets get our item lat and item value pointer lawn. Is that the right order? Lat lawn? Hell yeah. Uh, then what? What do we do with this? We have the like uh close node IDs, I guess. And we say for close node IDs. Uh OSM ID, I guess. We have a user data, OS uh, node storage. Get from OSM ID. This is the uh OSM point. And we say uh, item, we have our point, item dot value pointer lat. We take the distance from the OSM point lat minus our lat. Lat dist, lawn dist. So we do this the same thing for lawn. And then we say that the total dist is lat dist times lat dist plus lawn dist times lawn dist. And I guess we'll call this total dist two. What are we even trying to do here? We're trying to find the closest node so we can sort by squared distance. That's fine. Um, 
closest node is undefined and closest dist is std math inf for floats. If total dist two is less than the closest dist, we say closest node is equal to osm id and the closest dist is total dist two, I guess. <laughs> I guess. Dude, I have like absolutely no idea what's going on. I'm gonna be honest. I feel like I'm just kind of like saying stuff and writing whatever like the next line should be and like not making it anywhere farther than that. And I'm just kind of hoping that we end up in the right spot. <laughs> um, so we have like the closest node for each bus stop item. So I guess here we just say that those two things are connected. Somehow, how the fuck do we do that? <laughs> I guess we just gonna, we just gonna say like, here you go. We would like to push, I guess we also now have to say just like push. Um, can we say like push OSM way, push GTFS way, can we just like push way by index? So we're going to take in some indexes and we're not going to do any like Mac lookup. We're just going to be like nodes, node index directly, write it like this and num push ways plus equals one. Sure, fuck it. Why not? Let's push way by index and we are going to say that we're going to go from the uh, bus IDX is data writer gtfs nodes is it gtfs nodes yep and this is a node id to index map which is a hash map so get plus id item dot key pointer i guess and then this is like has guaranteed to be in here we're going to look at the osm index which is osm nodes closest node also just guaranteed and then we kind of just say like bus idx osm idx put both of those fucking things in here and like maybe that's a thing ha 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 using autocomplete i don't like i don't even are you flaming me are you like oh my god i'm such a cool programmer i code without autocomplete I don't know if you're, like, agreeing with me, being like, I'm lost, I don't know what I'm doing, and we're just doing the next thing, or if you're like, fuck you, I'm smarter than you. I don't know which one of those it is. <laughs> uh, it looks like it builds. Uh, it might work. <laughs> I don't really know what I'm expecting here. Um, I guess, okay, so what's gonna happen here? We are going to see a bunch of ways tacked on to the end of our data, but probably we're not going to draw them. We're probably not gonna draw them right now because we intentionally draw the open street map stuff separately from the bus streets, bus data stuff. So we're gonna have to add like another renderer to draw these like connections, uh, but it's okay because we're not getting there because we can't fucking, we don't know, we, like this isn't working. We're, we're, we're crashing. So OSM node buckets builder push key pointer lat long. So that kind of indicates that the lat long is out of bounds. Surprisingly. Lat long. Max lat and max min lat. These are only set when we push node impl. Okay, which is called by both GTFS nodes and OSM nodes. So should th there should be no nodes that are outside of the bounds here. Unless we fucked up the width and height. Width, height, width, height. Okay, push. We say lat long to bucket, lat long height width, lat long height width. Height, width, x buckets, y buckets. So I don't see any like flips in 
lat lawn anywhere? Lat lawn, lat lawn, height width. Lat lawn, height width. Feels okay. Feels okay. It would be interesting to like maybe GDB this and see what the fuck is going on. Run it. Let's see what we are doing wrong. We're doing something wrong. Frame seven. Lat. Optimize out. Uh, info args. All right. We're rebuilding in debug mode. <laughs> and hopefully this crash doesn't take like a year to get to. Uh, we have to give him a sec to think though. We have to give him a sec to think. Working hard, this poor little guy. He's like a... Is it Rihanna who goes work, 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 work? I can't remember. I can't remember. Dude, debug mode turns out really slow. I wonder if we can test this with... Uh, oh, there we go, we got there. We might have to scale back to some of like the easier to work with data eventually, but until then... Uh, frame seven, frame seven, info args. So our latitude and longitude is this, and uh, what do I even want to look at? Map data. We have width and height, lat long to bucket. He doesn't really know where these things start. He's assuming zero, zero. How is that possible? How is that possible? He takes the latitude over the height times y buckets. Don't we need a minimum value for here for this to work? Right? Am I fucking crazy? Latitude over height. So here, our latitude and longitude have to be relative to the minimum latitude and longitude? Is that how, like, our fucking way integrator works in, like, app? GPS pause X and GPS pause Y. I guess these have been converted into... into meters and so our meters might be relative to the top left corner of the map and that might just kind of make everything work uh let's see where like where do we say lat two meters lawn step times the longitude minus the min lawn uh okay yeah so it is just everything is like relative to the top left corner I see. So for now, we're just going to kind of work around this. Uh, by First of all, let's see if this is reproducible with the uh, shitty data. So make site, we're going to use shitty downtown data. Fuck. Uh, one, five, five, three, four goes to one, one, four. Boom. Boom, boom. Run. Uh, yes, this is reproducible, which is great. And then we're just going to see if, like, switching this to... Uh, minus data, writer, min, lat, minus data, writer, min, one. And we'll just kind of, like, fix me. What the fuck? We shouldn't have to subtract min x, y. Okay, and then when we call get, we have to do the same fucking shit. Fix me. Do not sub min lat long. It's fucking broken and stupid. But, you know, I guess we should see if it fixes it with, with the old data first. Or with the small data. Then if that works, we're chilling. Uh, he is mad because closest null node is sometimes null. Uh, 
Uh, now the question is, is that because closest distance is infinite? We should only do this if closest dist is not equal to std math inf. Then we do this. Because there might just not be a node in the bucket. Uh, which we kind of should dodge if we kind of set it up right, but no. Okay, attempt to use null value. Okay. I mean, we should never get closest node. This is coming from... Oh, this might be like not filtering out correctly for... Uh, this might be including like house nodes and stuff. So here we don't want to use user data no storage. We probably want to use like uh, the written, the actual written data. Data writer dot. I don't know, man. Like data writer OSM nodes. And I want a key iterator probably. What is like? What is this thing? node index yeah uh because he goes from id to index okay so then the latitude and longitude is like uh data is this is node id this is osm key osm node iterator i guess ugh ugh this is like node user data node storage get osm id then this is like data dot data is just data like here data data lat and data lon i guess sure and then this is osm id gross but i guess that's fine expected type i64 found i64 star okay and here as well okay maybe 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 okay that's working there's a lot of leakies but uh you know that's a problem for future me <laughs> let's see if we get something that is functional. So what I expect to see here is I expect to see, maybe I do expect to see the nodes drawn from, from the street corners to the bus stops. That's very possible. It depends on how we implemented it in the client before. So let's just kind of see if we get something. Okay, so good news, nothing is crashing. And then I wanna see if we look at like a bus stop. Do we see, oh yeah, here we go, here we go. This is a bus stop connection. So he is connecting from here to here. And then if we go to this bus stop, we hopefully see another one if we kind of like, it would be nice to draw them in a different color so that we can see them a little better. Uh, so how do we do that? How do we do that? Let's uh, look for app zig function render. Here we render num points to bus no start index. This now becomes a self metadata bus OSM to bus way start. We render those in blue and then we render the rest Uh, this is points. Where do we render the lines? Where are those blue lines coming from? Am I stupid? Whoa, 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 whoa. Where are these, where are these blue lines coming from? Like this. This must be like after this, but we're drawing arrays of points. So where do we draw elements? Render index buffer, len mode, render points, render selected way. I wonder if we do it like this. 
RGB 0 0.3, 0 0.31, or blue or vomit blue. Vomit blue for sure. We must be calling render. We must render the whole index buffer, then like render ways? No. Am I high? Render selected way. No, that's not it. Render points. Render quartz. Render points. It could be like render points. Like line strip. Where, like, are we calling this anywhere? Monitored. Debug wayfinding. This is path planner stuff. I'm actually like so confused why I can't find that. Bus. Bus node start index. Like, where is this use? App.zig. No. I'm actually like really lost. I don't understand how this stuff is being drawn. I mean, it has to be related to this. Can we look for like, who where else we use 0 0.3? Ah, we do it here. Aha, aha, aha. Okay, so on the base render, we're just for some reason rendering the point somewhere else like fucking idiots. Uh, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. I see, I see, I see. So here, let's kind of render the num bus segments and the num uh, connection segments, I guess we'll call it. So bus street split index, and we'll call this um, OS. Uh, uh, connection split IDX. I don't know, man. It's fine. We'll figure it out. So here, we're going to try to split basically the, the indices that are about um, buses, the indices that are about streets, and the indices that are about connecting those two grids together. So that should be somewhere, 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 somewhere. Here we go. This is uh, OS uh, connection split index, and then this is connection split index, and this is num bus segments, num connection segments, I think is what we called it. I don't remember, yep. So now we kind of have this where we draw in like yellow or something, which is I think red and green. We're gonna draw num connection segments from num street segments plus num bus segments, okay. Not the prettiest code, not the prettiest code, but this should give us what we want. And then I want to draw this center point in white. So now we should see, fuck. <laughs> uh, it's fine, it's fine. Uh, so here we're gonna call this first connection way is way lookup dot get metadata way OSM to bus way start index. <laughs> and then this is uh, uh, the connection buff index. Sure, whatever, doesn't fucking matter. Doesn't matter. Connection buff index, okay. And this needs to come from First connection line. There we go. Okay, I think that does what we want. I'm hoping now that we should see some yellow lines uh, drawn kind of like oh, towards the blue bus stop points. I guess the blue bus stop points are so fucking big though that it's kind of hard to see. So can we just kind of shrink them a little bit? Make them a little smaller? Make them a little smaller? Hello, I'd like to refresh, please. Sir, please would let me refresh. It's because the fucking satellite data takes time to load. Okay, let's look for a fucking bus stop. There we go. There we go. Okay, yellow line to bus stop. Yellow line to bus stop. Yellow line to bus stop. I mean, so whether, you know, you can argue that these are not where you get on the bus, right? Which you would be right. You would be right that these are not the right stops. Um, <laughs> especially here. Like, what the fuck are we doing? Uh, 
So this definitely needs some improvement. Like, you know, going from the middle of the street onto the bus, fucking stupid for sure, for sure. But at least we have the two things connected, right? So this is going to allow us to start writing like a proper algorithm that like uh, tries to traverse these yellow lines to board the bus in cases where it makes sense. Now, again, we will fix, we will fix it. We will fix it. Don't, do, don't you worry. At some point in the future, we will fix the yellow lines, but that is not a problem for today. That is a problem for future me. In fact, all problems are a problem for future me because I think that this is a good point to call it. I was hoping that today we would get to the point where we were actually traversing these lines onto the graph, um, but it turns out that we did not get there and we are not going to get there in the next 10 minutes. So maybe we'll call it there. We'll call it there and we'll be back tomorrow. We will be back tomorrow to try to make it so that we can ride the bus and that will be cool and fun and sick. So thank you for watching, guys. If you liked what you saw, we stream most days at around 12.30 Pacific time to 4 Pacific time. If you're watching on YouTube, you'll be like, what the hell? That's only two hours. Or that's four hours, three and a half hours. We, these videos are only two hours. And I will say that's because the first hour and a half is only on Twitch or Patreon, um, where we kind of handle kind of more like behind the scenes-ish stuff. So we're kind of less focused. We are a little less like there's a schedule and a little more like we'll just kind of do whatever small tasks need to be done, but we're not gonna, we try to avoid major feature development or for things that we think would be interesting for a mainstream VOD, but there is stuff that goes on there if you want to see more. Uh, otherwise, if you're watching on Twitch, there's a YouTube link in the Twitch description where you have our projects organized into playlists. So if you want to check out anything that we've worked on before, operating system, like 3D engine, neural network, file system, QR code decoder, stuff like that, that's all there. If you want to check it out, there's a GitHub link in the Twitch description where you can swing by and check out the code for this if you want to see it, as well as the code for everything else. Um, Like, subscribe, use your Twitch primes. Um, What else, what else, what else? I think that's it. YouTube, goodbye, and Twitch, let's find someone to raid. Later.